Hey everyone, it's Darby from Blue Television Games, and today we'll answer the question, is Super Mario Bros. better than Sonic the Hedgehog? To keep things as fair as possible, Ow. we'll be looking at the 8-bit version of Sonic 1 to face off against Nintendo's classic Super Mario Bros. Keep in mind, Sonic the Hedgehog came out six years after Super Mario Bros., However, I think it'll still be a fair battle overall. Let me know in the comments which games you'd like to see go head to head next. Round one, which game has the better enemies? Super Mario Brothers has 14 different enemies in it. Goombas, the evil mushrooms that betrayed the Mushroom Kingdom. I'll kill you, Mario. Nothing can stop. One stomp and he dies. Green Koopa Troopa's orders are to destroy Mario. Jump on him and it'll stun him for a bit. You can also kick his shell to take out other enemies. Red Koopa Troopas are similar to green, but also smarter. Green ones will walk off cliffs, while red ones know that walking off cliffs is pretty dumb. The green paratroopa is out of control. If you jump on him, he'll lose his wings. The red ones have better control over themselves, but go down the same way the green ones do. Buzzy Beetle, he's the coolest. Oh, thanks, Darby. Hammer bros are the worst. They typically come in pairs and constantly chuck hammers at you. I'm not even sure where they keep all those hammers at. Lakitu, or Lakitu if you prefer, is a mysterious turtle that flies around in a cloud dropping spiny eggs at Mario. Spinies are Lakitu's pets. They have sharp spikes preventing Mario from jumping on them. Piranha plants are man-eating plants that live in pipes. They like to chomp. Bloopers are squid-like enemies that attack in zigzag patterns. If you stick to the bottom of the ocean, they'll have trouble attacking you. Cheep Cheeps are found in the water levels and above ground in some levels as well. They're much easier to dodge in water. They get pretty crazy above ground. Ah, get it up, get it up, get it up. <laughs> Bullet Bills chase after Mario, but they fly in a straight line. Potaboos, potabos, lava bubbles, whatever you like to call them. They come flying out of the lava and castle levels trying to keep Mario from reaching King Bowser. On the other hand, Sonic the Hedgehog has 12 different enemies in its game. However, a better variety as all the Koopa Troopas are pretty much the same. Ball hogs are like pig robots that toss exploding balls at Sonic. Bombs cannot be destroyed by Sonic, however, they like to self-destruct and try to take out Sonic. Burrobots are the mole-like robot that prefers to attack from underground. Be careful not to get drilled, Hedgehog. I'm waiting. Buzz Bomber will try to attack Sonic from the sky. They only shoot one single shot at a time, making for one of the easier enemies in the game. Caterpillar is an evil, choppy face caterpillar robot. You want to attack its head and avoid its spiky body. Chopper is a mechanical fish that'll try to eat you. Crab meats are crab robots that walk around occasionally shooting out projectile balls. Uh, yeah. Jaws are named after the famous killer shark, and they look like sharks. What are the odds? 100%. That's the odds. 100%. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Motobugs are a lot like Buzzy Beetles. Cool dudes that deserve a high five if you ask me. Hashtag save the Motobugs. Newtons are the chameleon-like enemies that have the ability to camouflage themselves. Orbanauts are the sea urchin robots typically have four spiky balls circling them. Once they see Sonic, they will start throwing their balls at him. <laughs> Why do I always have these ball jokes? I know how it sounds. Spikes are tricky enemies for Sonic. They have a hermit crab-like shell with spikes that prevent Sonic from attacking him easily. Both games have a variety of memorable enemies and about the same amount of enemies as well. I'm gonna give one point to Mario and one point to Sonic. Round one is a tie. Aww. Round two. Which game has better bosses? In Super Mario Brothers, the main boss is Bowser. On level four of each world, you will enter a castle and fight Bowser. If you use a fire flower, you will reveal that the first seven Bowsers are actually fakes. All eight boss fights in this game are almost exactly the same. The only real difference is you might encounter some fire bars, some lava bubbles, and eventually, Bowser even borrows Hammer Bros hammers from them and starts tossing the hammers everywhere. The two options are to hit him with fireballs or just jump on the axe. It's a very simple boss fight, it's classic, but it's nothing fancy. In Sonic the Hedgehog, you face off against Dr. Robotnik or Dr. Eggman if you prefer. There are six zones in Sonic and only five of them end with a boss fight. That means there's eight boss fights in Mario, only five in Sonic. However, in Green Hill Zone, Robotnik uses Eggmobile to fly high above Sonic. Eventually, he'll drop down and attempt to charge at you. It's an easy fight, but a good one to get you warmed up for the future boss battles. 
In Bridge Zone, Eggman returns with a submarine that can hide underwater and also shoot energy balls from its turrets. Watch out for his balls. Okay, they said I can't help it. In Jungle Zone, you need to fight Robotnik on a vine-like platform. He flies high above, which makes him hard to hit. He drops bombs from a cannon, which you'll have to dodge as they roll around the platform. This fight's a little tricky. In Labyrinth Zone, you have to fight Eggman in his submarine, but underwater this time. In this fight, Eggman can shoot you with his balls. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Or he can fire a homing torpedo, okay? He does what he does. The final boss is at the end of Sky Base Zone. In this fight, Robotnik is in a glass tube and jumping on a switch. He'll fire more balls at you, which can be tricky to dodge because of the zappy spheres that roll back and forth along the ground. Could have said balls there, said spheres, good choice. And uh, occasionally they try to zap Sonic. Super Mario Brothers may have more bosses overall, but Sonic has a better variety of fights. This round has to go to Sonic the Hedgehog. That's round three. Which game has the better music? Super Mario Brothers has some of the most recognizable music in any video game ever. We have the overworld theme. We have the underground theme. We have water levels. And we have the castle music. Now for the underground theme and the castle music, you get some pretty short loops. There's not a ton to the songs. The real meat and potatoes of Super Mario Brothers is that overworld theme. It's just one of the best video game songs ever. That's pretty much it. There's a short song that plays when you finish the game. The invincibility music. Of course, the flagpole jingle. Now, Sonic the Hedgehog has more songs. It has nine of them. The Master System wasn't as popular in the US, so a lot of people missed out on this game. We have Green Hill Zone music. We have Bridge Zone music. We have Jungle Zone music. We have Bonus Zone music. We have Labyrinth Zone music. We have Scrap Brain Zone music. We have Sky Base Zone music. We have the boss theme song. We got the ending theme song. And on top of all these awesome songs, just like Super Mario Brothers, it has some short jingles that are really great too. Like the music that plays before you start an act. And the one that plays at the completion of the act. This was a tough one, but if I'm gonna be fair and honest, I gotta give it to Sonic. It has more songs, and a lot of these songs are really, really good. All right. Round four, replayability. In Super Mario Brothers, if you're able to beat 8-4, you are then presented with a new harder quest. All the Goombas become Buzzy Beetles. Sweet. All the enemies are faster. The lifts are smaller. Fire bars appear in all possible locations and castles. And you'll see enemies added to earlier levels to make things harder. That's a pretty cool challenge once you've beaten the game. Now in Sonic, the only reason to replay the game would be if you didn't collect all the Chaos Emeralds. You need them to get the good ending. Beating the game will not unlock anything new. You'll be playing the same levels all over again. So for replayability, I gotta give this one to Mario. 
It's a really fun experience to see levels somewhat remixed in your second playthrough, and it's a great challenge. Round 5. Which game has the better bonus room slash special stages? In Super Mario Bros. you have two different bonus areas. First is found by trying to enter the pipes throughout the game. Uh oh. Where am I? Be sure to check brick blocks throughout the game as well. Some contain a vine that will take you up to coin heaven. Up in the clouds, you get to hop around and collect lots of coins. I mean, those are pretty cool. It's hard to see through those clouds. I hope we can get rid of them. Get the hint? In Sonic the Hedgehog, if you have over 50 rings and hit the signpost at the end of a level, you get to play a pinball-like special stage. In these special stages, you can collect rings for lives, you can collect continues as well. These special stages feel a bit more unique, and for that reason, I have to say Sonic wins this round. <laughs> round 6. Performance One thing that really impresses me about Super Mario Bros. is how well the game runs. Rarely do you see any slowdown, the scrolling is very smooth, and you don't hardly see any sprite flickering. Keep in mind this game came out 6 years almost before Sonic came out. Now, Sonic pushes the limits of the hardware, but it does have some issues. I'm very impressed with how fast you can go in this game, but it has some crazy issues with slowdown. Labyrinth Zone in particular. I get you're underwater, but it's so sluggish it really ruins that zone. There's multiple instances in this game where things just seem a little off, and with an overall smoother gaming experience, I have to give this to old Mario. Round 7. The Game Link. Super Mario Bros. has 32 levels and 64 if you count the second quest. To get through the entire game without warps, it could take you up to an hour. Or, you know, 20 minutes if you're a speedrunner. I speedrun this game so good actually. Ah, oh, mate, come on! And to do both quests without warps, it could take you two hours to beat the game. Or maybe, you know, 40-ish if once again you're a speedrunner. But, 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 do boom, but, do but, but. I don't want to reach my Sonic will take about 1.5 to 2 hours to complete. It only has 18 stages. Taking longer doesn't mean it's a better game. My little piggies almost went to the market. That ought to do it. This is more about which game stays fun and doesn't overstay its welcome. <gasps> Where'd she go? For this round, I'm going to give it a tie. One point for each of you. Whoa! Round 8. Level Variety. Super Mario Bros. doesn't have a lot of variety in stages. You have an overworld filled with bushes and clouds, underground where bricks are blue, athletic levels featuring tree platforms and lifts, underwater levels featuring seaweed and unique green blocks, and castle levels featuring lava and gray bricks this time. You'll see some alternate versions where it's nighttime, but you basically have five level types. In Sonic the Hedgehog, you have six different zones. Each zone has a completely new look to it. Green Hill Zone features steep hills, green palm trees, beautiful flowers, totem poles, and checkered ground. Bridge Zone features a bright blue sky with clouds, forest, and mountains in the background. It has grassy islands, bridges, and a beautiful blue lake. Jungle Zone is a jungle. Imagine that. On South Island with dense trees and huge waterfalls. You'll see lots of green bushes in the background. It really gives you that lost in the jungle feeling. Lambert Zone is filled with lots of water. This gives everything a very blue hue. There are vines and crystals scattered throughout. Scrap Brain Zone is a polluted industrial complex. You'll see lots of gray metal, blinking lights, and even a full industrial complex in the background. Sky Base Zone features a dark sky with intense electric bolts that light everything up. Act 1 leads you to Act 2, which is where you board a giant airship. The airship itself practically feels like a new zone. I love the simplicity of Super Mario Bros. 1, but Sonic has way more variety in its levels. Another point to Sonic the Hedgehog. I just don't know what we're gonna win! Round 9. Who has the better power-ups? In Super Mario Bros., you have four different power-ups you collect from bricks and question mark blocks. The magic mushrooms will make Mario grow larger, and also allows him to take one hit. The fire flower allows Mario to throw fireballs, which can take out most of the enemies in the game at a distance. The star man makes Mario invincible to enemies for a short period of time. 
He can also take out enemies in one hit while under the effects of the star. The final power up, if you want to call it that, is the 1-Up Mushroom, which gives you an extra life. That's still pretty useful. Sonic collects his power ups from monitors. Super rings will give you 10 rings all at once. The shield will prevent you from losing rings when you get hit. Invincible monitors are like the star from Mario. You can't take damage from enemies and you can take enemies out with it when active. Power sneakers make you run faster. 1-Up monitors give you an extra life. Chaos Emeralds can be collected for the true ending, but won't power up Sonic. Sorry, no Super Sonic and Sonic 1. Both games have very similar power-ups. Overall, they lack the more interesting power-ups you see in the later games. I'm gonna give this point to Super Mario Bros. because the Fire Flower is by far, to me, the most fun power-up in both games. A point for Mario. Round 10. Level Design. Super Mario Bros. levels are crafted with expert care. Each level teaches you something new and prepares you for the next. The difficulty ramps up expertly and it never feels unfair. There are a couple maze castles where you have to find the correct path to progress. Those are probably my least favorite as it's basically guessing. Luckily, those levels aren't that long. World 8 provides the most challenge as it removes the checkpoints and the levels feel longer. It features some of the trickiest jumps in the game and the ultimate Bowser fight. Sonic does a great job at ramping up the difficulty as you progress. There are some confusing maze levels in it as well. The ones in Sonic are a bit more frustrating as they are longer. In the last two levels of Sonic, you get no rings, which means in one hit, you're dead. Both games are well designed and feature a good difficulty curve. However, I have to give this one to Super Mario Bros. Let's get out while I'm getting good! Round 11, Presentation. Super Mario Bros. starts with a basic title screen which transitions into a demo. Once you start the game, you get the lives and level name on a mostly black screen. At the end of levels, you will jump and grab a flagpole. This transitions into a short automated animation of Mario sliding down the flagpole and entering a castle. Sometimes you'll even get some fireworks. Before some levels, there will be a short cutscene-like transition of Mario entering a pipe which usually leads to an underground level or a water level. Castles mostly end with your buddy Toad telling you that your princess is in another castle. That's until the World 8 castle where you get to rescue the princess. Sadly, the ending cutscene feels a lot like rescuing the Toads. You do get some cool music though. Besides that, it makes great spaghetti sauce! In Sonic the Hedgehog, you get a short little title screen with a black background. Once you start the game, you get a map of South Island, revealing all the zones in the game. At the end of levels, instead of flagpoles, you'll be spinning signs. Sonic will give you a cool little peace sign, too. Before the third act, Robotnik will appear on the map, hinting that you'll be doing a boss fight. No matter if you get the good or bad ending, you will get a cool little cutscene. If you don't collect all the Chaos Emeralds, you'll hit Robotnik one last time, and it'll go to the credits. You also get this cool little pixel art of Sonic singing into a microphone. If you do get all the emeralds, you get the special ending, where Sonic will toss all the emeralds into the sky, which removes all of Eggman's evil pollution from South Island. Overall, Sonic has a better presentation with a more satisfying ending. Another point to Sonic. The final round. Which game has a better story? One day, the kingdom of the peaceful mushroom people was invaded by the Koopa, a tribe of turtles famous for their black magic. The quiet, peace-loving mushroom people were turned into mere stones, bricks, and even field horsehair plants, and the mushroom kingdom fell into ruin. The only one who can undo the magic spell on the mushroom people and return them to their normal selves is the Princess Toadstool, the daughter of the Mushroom King. Unfortunately, she is presently in the hands of the great Koopa Turtle King. Mario, the hero of the story, hears about the Mushroom People's plight and sets out on a quest to free the Mushroom Princess from the evil Koopa and restore the fallen kingdom of the Mushroom People. I mean, that's a pretty cool story. In Sonic the Hedgehog, the story goes as follows. Sonic lives in South Island with all of his animal pals. South Island is also the place where the six Chaos Emeralds lay dormant. These emeralds give energy to all living things, but could also be used for evil in weapons of destruction. <laughs> this is Dr. Robotnik's plan to get all six emeralds and conquer the world. It's up to Sonic to collect the emeralds first and take out Eggman. Both stories involve saving things. In Mario, it's saving the princess, toads, and the Mushroom Kingdom. In Sonic, it's saving the entire world. 
Neither story is too complex, and neither story really stands out as being better to me personally. What do you think? For me, I'm gonna give this one a tie. Final score, Mario 7, Sonic 8. All right, so Sonic takes this one. On paper, to me, it is a better game overall. Now, for me personally, if I could only play one of these games for the rest of my life, I would stick with Super Mario Brothers. It's the first game I ever played, and it has that nostalgia factor. I do think Sonic deserves to win this, but it also came out many years after Super Mario Brothers. The fact that Mario could stand up to a game that came out six years after it was released speaks volumes to how great of a game it really is. Do you agree with my scores? Which game do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. Which two games would you like to see go head to head next episode? Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you around.